Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this year we are kind of focusing on how do we live like Jesus, and for the Epiphany season we've chosen the theme of resetting, and today I'm going to be talking about resetting your body. Now, you might think that with the theme of reset your body, I would be doing something like, oh gosh, you know, here comes a New Year's thing about exercising more or eating right or losing weight or, you know, the take care of yourself sermon. Though that may be a good idea, I mean, no judgment here, that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. There's a great description of the human body by Mac McCutcheon by a book that he wrote, The Compass in Your Nose, and I want to read it to you. The body is a temple, a warehouse, a laboratory, a pharmacy. The brain alone produces more than 50 psychoactive drugs. An electric company, a farm, think about that, that the next time you get athlete's foot. A mass transit system, a library. The brain stores the equivalent information of 500 sets of the Encyclopedia Britannica. A utility company, a hospital, a sewage treatment plant. It also has a self-regulating police force with daily infusions of millions of microscopic criminals and terrorists to apprehend. An array of traffic controllers an army of medics and mechanics. A trillion platelets cruise the circulatory system daily in search of wounds. A centralized and outlying governments that argue with one another. The stomach and brain, for example, never agree on taking that second helping of chocolate cake. And motors, pumps, compressors, vacuums, regulators, air conditioners, Furnaces, plumbing, filters, strainers, thermostats, alarm clocks, timers, and more. Yes, your body is amazing. And it's no wonder that the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians uses the image of the body in describing the church with all of its complexity and diversity and unity. But we also know And he knows that the body isn't perfect. It is susceptible to disease or abuse or misuse. And the church at Corinth that St. Paul is writing to is experiencing all of those. They're experiencing disease. There are outside forces that are influencing the church. And the people in the church are having a difficult time divorcing themselves from the world in which they live and they're bringing them into the church. They're also experiencing abuse. They're not treating people the right way. There's a divide between those who are rich and those who are poor. There are questions about whether or not you have enough spirit or not. And there's misuse of not understanding the mission and the ministry and the nature of the church. What does it mean to be a community of Christ in the world? They're struggling with what does that mean for them. And Paul is trying to teach them that the church is not just an organization, it's an organism. It's not just a place or a building or a people, it's a living body that has multi dimensions to it. The first dimension is that it is physical. It is a body, a physical body made up of a people, people with physical bodies, but bodies that are made in the image of God, every single one of them. We see that so clearly in the book of Genesis when, when creation happens and people are made in the image of God. And that is to be the self image of people going forward that you are unique you are special because you are made in God's image the church is to be that place 
where together we learn how to be genuine human beings, worshiping God and serving him by reflecting his image, your image, in the world. His Holy Spirit lives in you through holy baptism. Another dimension is that the body is also the body of Christ, the Messiah. The body of Christ is a resurrected body. The body is alive. It is unafraid of death. It is inspired for the future. As N.T. Wright says, transformed by God's act of dramatic new creation. The body is also the church, a community of faith, a new and different sort of community, not based on politics or power or identity. Our allegiance is to Christ, the one who lived and died and rose again and who continues to give his spirit to his church, to call, to gather, to enlighten with his purposes. And you and I become members the same way through baptism, that rite of initiation and acceptance. And it cuts across dividing lines of of the great social barriers and divisions that we face. We are to respect others in an unrespectful world. And And that should set us apart from the world. We all belong to Jesus. Every single person in this family of God, this family of faith, matters. The divorced mom, the young family, the single college student, the little child, the empty nester, the newly retired, and the senior homebound. Never can we say, I don't need you. For all are called by the Spirit into ministry. Some teaching, some preaching, some generosity, some caring, others singing, organizing, or leading. Every single person is indispensable. And it leads to a diversity of gifts. All gifts are welcome. All gifts given and used And we honor others for their particular gifts. And by doing so, it honors God who gave them those gifts. And we care for one another. Members, community members, friends, those who are marginalized. And that includes the wider church, both our local neighbors as well as churches all around the world. And when the church is persecuted in faraway places or near at home, it hurts us as well. For we are one holy church. We need each other. God has called you here for a reason, to use your gifts. And may you have the confidence to join with others and offer yourself freely for God's service, for, for God's service, so that God may use you to make a difference in this part of God's world. God is so great. Your body is amazing. God has given you a body with an extraordinary brain and a loving heart, lips to speak love and grace ears to hear his gospel, eyes to see his beauty. He's blessed you with feet to journey in life and hands to do God's work. And he's gathered us together through his spirit to be his body in the world, living and loving like Christ, bringing people together to love God and the people that are around us Fulfill that purpose. Fulfill your purpose in the body of Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.